Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to look at arpeggios and sweet picking. Arpeggios are nothing more than chords with the notes played separately. So again, if you take a D, take a D chord, standard D chord, and you just play the notes separately, that's the arpeggio. So the three main shapes of arpeggios are major, minor, and diminished. I'm going to show you those three shapes right now. The first shape is a major shape. It goes like this. Pinky on the root. So we're going to say C major right here. That is a C major arpeggio. If you move that same shape up here and play the same pattern, it's an A major arpeggio. Again, the root is on the pinky. That's where it starts. The minor to that, on the A, the shape goes like this. Alright, again, the root starts with the pinky. If you move it around, that's started here, it's an e, e minor. Start there, it's a D minor, and so forth and so on. The third shape is probably not used that often. It's a diminished. It's what you would play in the seventh degree of a scale of a... If we go back to our triads, when, when we looked at triads, the root note would be what the key is. So let me start on C. That's our one. We'll call it the one or the root, and that's C. Then there's the second degree, which would be D, which would be minor. Third would be minor. Fourth would be major, fifth would be major, sixth would be the relative minor, and the seventh is where that diminished comes into play. And this is what the diminished shape looks like. Again. Not really widely played, at least not that pattern. I know Ingve, um, you see him play all kinds of really cool diminished arpeggios and they just sound so much better. We're going to take a look at one of them uh, a little bit later. So, that's, that's the three major um, arpeggio shapes that you could use when you're in soloing and if you want to incorporate. You could just use the bottom parts of them. Um, the down, do a minor, um, for instance. If this was the minor, you could bring it up as a major over here. The sweep picking portion of it is nothing more than instead of individually picking each note up and down, up and down, up and down, you're raking the strings and up. Down and up. So you practice that, and this is with the major pattern. Down, 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 down up, down, up, 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 up. Down, 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 up, 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 up. So it's Sounds cool, right? I know. I agree. That's why everybody tries to do them. You can see when you involve scales and you mix in the arpeggios, now you got some soloing going on. Um, and I threw in a tap in there, so you could even throw a tap. Uh, once you get comfortable with the up and down sweeping. So um, we're going to look at some different arpeggios, one by Paul Gilbert, one by Ingve. We're going to look at that next. All right.
Hey, welcome back. The first section that we did was we learned basically what arpeggios are, major, minor, diminished arpeggios, just the basics, um, ways of getting started incorporating them into solos and whatnot. In this part, we're just going to look at certain players' arpeggios that they have come up with through the years, and they're pretty, pretty awesome, and some of them are pretty hard. We'll start out with Paul Gilbert. I have two of them that he's done. Uh, one is the hardest one. We'll do the hardest one first, and it's a stretch. It's um, 14th fret, 11, 8 on the high E string. Then you jump to the G string and do the same exact uh, frets. 14, 11, 8. So it's... Finish it off with the 12th fret, 3rd finger on the A string. Practice and um, as Paul himself said, and, and, and I've seen the video, don't hurt your hand doing this. Um, if you feel pain in your hand, just stop because you don't want to do any damage to your hand in a long term corporal tunnel and whatnot. Um, ease into it if you can. If you can't do it at all, just forget about it. It's not that important. The other Paul Gilbert lick is a lick that uh, friends of mine were shown in a Paul Gilbert um, seminar about. 25, maybe 30 years ago. Uh, it starts, well, the root is on the pinky, so it can go anywhere, but it, it's basically the shape is. Now, the trickiness of this is that it plays on the same fret on the D and G string. little ring to it but um we'll tab it out down there below and uh again practice it this one is not as painful as the other one though the other one is just that the other one's just painful this one is more of just practicing until you get that the uh the, the hand over which we Paul, Paul Gilbert uh, arpeggios that I know of right now. Um, next we're going to move on to a couple of Yngwie ones, so hold on for a second. Oh! I got a different guitar, what happened? I think, and I bet, it's because Yngwie tunes to E flat, and these tremolos easily tune any way you want them because they're not floating, whereas these others on the Ibanez have a Floyd Rose system in it. The tremolo floats, so when you go to change the tuning, it messes everything up. So instead of messing with that, we go right to this. So to the lick. So Ingbe does this diminished lick in Far Beyond the Sun. It goes, well, the shape is. So that's the shape throughout the lick. Moves it down here. from there. But, that's the lick. Um, the other Ingwe lick is kind of tricky. One part of it is very tricky. So it, it's, it's, it's in that song also, and it's goes like this. Stretch it a 14. There's a tricky part. So you're barring these on the 14th fret.
pretty tricky. Um, a lot of practice on that one. Just getting the just getting the moves down. So they're they're the advanced licks that I threw in here at the end, um, just for fun's sake or just to mess around. Try them out, see what you can do. And uh, but the other ones in the beginning with the the major and the minor, you'll use them all the time if you uh, incorporate them in with solos and just using the bottom parts and all kinds of stuff. So until next time, rock on.